Hey everyone, what is the crack? Today I am having a good look at the Russell Sim Racing 488 GT3 rim. It all came about when a friend of mine said, hey, I've got this really cool rim, uh, you want to review it for your channel? I was like, yes, of course I do. Uh, so I went, took some footage, and then realized I know absolutely nothing about this thing. So uh, not only did I need to spend some time with it, but I reached out to Jakob. Jakob Taran is the guy who runs Russell Sim Racing, and I wanted to know his motivation behind him. I, behind it, I wanted to know why did he actually create this? What's it all about? What's the end goal? And he basically said he, he kind of he started making one. It was he wanted the simplest, cheapest way to make the most authentic GT3 rim available uh, for sim racing. So after creating an initial prototype, Jakob was actually lucky enough to get feedback from David Perel, who races real life 488 GT3 cars. And much to Jakob's surprise, he was told that it's actually a really good start, but that it could be more accurate. So Jakob returned to the drawing board and he basically was so inspired to reach that authenticity that David had spoken to him about. And he really threw the kitchen sink at it. I mean, this thing is absolutely amazing. Jakob knew that he was really, really close to his target of having a perfect replica uh, or almost perfect replica of a GT3 488 rim. On the left of your screen, you've got the headings for all the various sections of this video. If there are any things that you're particularly interested in or that you want to revisit at a later stage, they're on the left throughout this video. They do disappear every now and then just to not to take away from the visuals, but all the timestamps are in the description below. And uh, please give a like and a subscribe and all that kind of stuff while you're down there. So my first impressions of this wheel, I mean, geez, how many sim racing products do you get? in a protective, almost military style case uh, presented on a silky fabric with just shininess oozing out of every corner of it. I was almost afraid to touch the thing without gloves, let alone actually use it without gloves. Absolutely just stunning. Visually, the, the uh, impact was massive because it can be so difficult to get it right with the logos and stuff like that. This particular model was actually delivered without stickers by the customer's request and you'll see later in the video some stickers have actually been applied and you'll see how they look on the actual rim. The carbon fiber is just deep and glorious. I mean you could you could just tilt this thing around and as you can see in the video it just it just makes itself look so amazingly good. Uh, the real deal is completely it's a solid piece of carbon fiber. Uh, on this you get a faceplate with the carbon fiber and uh, for the upgraded model, uh, which is about 80 euro more expensive, uh, the rear plate is also carbon fiber. So my quick unboxing video the other day was extremely popular with you guys. Thank you very much for watching that. I really wanted to capture the emotion and the feelings of, you know, buying one of these things and lifting it out of the box and just holding it for the first time and really just the excitement of going to go and use it. I knew at that moment that my whole schedule for doing this review actually changed because I wanted to spend really good time with this rim. I wanted to properly do real races, not just race against AI, actually do real races and feel what it's like on triple screens, on VR, all that kind of stuff. And I really spent a good bit of time with it now over the last couple of days and uh, I feel that I have a lot to tell you about it. First things first, this rim actually fits all common wheelbases. The adapter that you see here, the red 3D printed one, is a slowly adapter. The uh, plans are freely available for that and you can get any 3D printer to print one of those up. They're really good, really sturdy. Most people use them. It's a really, really great product. You can use a Fanatec Podium or any aftermarket adapters as well. Uh, it fits a standard wheel pattern. So uh, really, really nice, really easy to fit. And as you can see, it doesn't actually interface with your steering wheel directly it comes with its own USB cable. The USB cable goes directly from the steering wheel to your PC. So one of the things that I noticed straight away when I unboxed this was that that cable is actually relatively short. Now there's good stretch in it, there's really good give in it, but if I was to plug this straight into my PC, it would be under quite a bit of tension and especially as I'm rotating or if I hit a wall or whatever and it goes 900 degrees or however far it will go, I, I wouldn't really be too comfortable with having that much tension on the cable. So uh, I was lucky that I had a an extender, a USB extension cable, and that worked fine. Plugged it in, 
recognized straight out of the box. It comes up as a button box and worked really, really well, really well, really easy to set up, really easy to program in the buttons. The buttons themselves have a really nice clicky feel, especially with no gloves on, you can really make out where the buttons are. With gloves, I found it a little bit more difficult, especially the ones on the right hand side, they're not separated by the little hat button, so it's uh, a little bit more difficult to find them, and especially because the buttons are actually at the exact same level as the carbon fibre, and the uh, black plastic parts are recessed slightly. So it, give, it does give a very nice finish, very nice luxurious feel. Using gloves and being in VR, I found them a little bit difficult to locate at times, but that is not a reflection on this actual product because this of course is a true to life replica of the real deal. And when I look at photos of the real deal on Google, it looks exactly the same. Every single detail is just is there. The only thing that I notice is that obviously the real deal is a solid piece of carbon fiber and the rotary switches at the bottom are slightly smaller uh, on the real life version. But I actually like the relatively uh, chunky or the larger versions. The thumb switches, these are a massive a hot topic, I guess. Um, if you read any of Jakob's posts, these switches cost 35 euro each these little switches but they are exactly like the ones that you find on a real gt3 488 rim so he could have just gone with a d-pad just regular buttons whatever but he wanted the authenticity of it all that means that if you're buying one of these wheels for 420 euro 105 euro of that was the cost price of those three buttons that's how much Jakob cares about the details on this steering wheel. That's really, really important to note. The rotary switches are really nice. As I said, they're kind of a little bit larger than the real deal, but it was quite nice in VR. They were quite nice to use. Switching it over to the right is basically only a single input. You don't have 16 different channels for that input. So it's just a fairly uh, binary operation that gets translated through but that's good enough if you're going to your next uh, MGUK cycle cycling brake bias anything like that the gear shifters the gear shifters on this thing are just lovely they are probably I would nearly go as far as to say they are the best gear shifters that I've used on any rim they are so nice they're nicer than the Fanatec podium they're not they, the, the, the distance between the grips and the actual paddles is just it's so good it's so perfect it's it's not hard to see that a lot of time went into this Jakob told me that he spent over a month just developing the flappy paddles on this so that's pretty impressive the gear change is really really rewarding really responsive and I didn't have any issues with double shifts or downshifts or miss shifts everything is very very clear very concise so he did a fantastic job with those even the paddles on their own are just brilliant so the grips on the 488 rim are not full length grips like you might have on other rims for instance on the Thrustmaster or any of the other rims really the, the grips go the full way up to the top that took a little bit of getting used to for me because of where your fingers slot into the steering wheel I found that my finger kind of hit the little allen key that holds the back plate on so even through the gloves I found uh, I was getting a little bit of an irritation spot on my uh, on my fingers on my index finger uh, just from that little bit of now that could just be me holding it incorrectly but I found even when I readjusted I kept sliding back into that uh, into the, the the head of that bolt and it was just irritating me a little bit I think I can look past that I think I can get over that but it would be something that would be really nice to fix with perhaps a, a flush bolt or something like that. The materials are beautiful. There's foam inside that. I can feel there's some little bit of give. The, the suede or the Alcantara, I'm not exactly sure what it is, is just very, very nice. And the stitching is sublime. It's as Italian as it comes in the Italian colors. Um, it reminds me of like a Nardi or a high end Italian interior, it's absolutely stunning. Here you can see this rim next to the other Thrustmaster wheels that I actually already own. I've got the open rim, I've got the F1 rim, and size-wise there's not a big difference, but I found 
maybe just the way it is, the way it bows out at the end, it's slightly larger. I felt very in control of everything while I was driving with this. It was really easy to make adjustments and it marries very well with the TSPC racer that I'm actually using it on. As for the buttons, the layout, all that, I can't criticize that layout. That's not the point of this video. But what I can say is when you're sim racing, you may not need exactly what you need in real life. For instance, not having a directional pad on the steering wheel or not having that option, that could be a deal breaker for me because I'm constantly adjusting my fuel, stuff like that while I'm in race. But in the pursuit of authenticity, I mean, are you going to put a directional pad on it when it doesn't have one in real life? I think not. If somebody who buys something like this, they want the real deal. They're going to have a button box with a directional hat on it or something like that. They want their steering wheel to be as realistic as possible. Which brings me to my next point. I race mainly in VR. Do I really need a steering wheel like this when I race in VR? Well, I have to admit, it's been on my rig for the last couple of days and every time I walk past my rig, I kind of stare at it a little bit. So even when I'm not gaming, even when I'm not driving, I really like having this here. As for, you know, do you need this in VR? I have to say yes. I mean, if you're driving this in game and you've got, you see your steering wheel in game when you're in VR, and if the steering wheel actually feels like the real deal, that's simulation. That's exactly what you want. So I would say whether you race in VR or on triples, this thing is actually tremendous value for money. You probably wouldn't build one yourself for cheaper, even if you had the skills, especially not your first couple. It's only when you start selling a few that you start breaking even, but I would put money on it that he is making very, very little on each one of these. And as time goes on and as his company grows, these are going to get more expensive. And if you're going to buy one and have a look at the AMG one that he's developing at the moment, his work is stunning. He is investing in the company. They are going to get more expensive now is the time to buy 100%. If you take nothing else from this video, if you're thinking about buying one of these, now is the time to buy. My final thought, this thing is amazing. It's like the future of sim racing and with companies like Russell Sim Racing emerging and lots of other ones doing you know, gearboxes and uh, even direct drive wheels, let's not mention Field VR. It's amazing to see what people are doing in their own interest to start off with but because they have access to the community they're actually able to sell these things and share their talent with the community so it's a super exciting time with 3d printing with knowledge sharing um, and with everybody pretty much getting better and better and better at sim racing uh, more people doing it people picking it up from younger ages uh, it's a really really exciting time uh, the geeks and nerds of the 80s and 90s now have the disposable income to buy amazing toys like this and as a result of there being a market and companies like Russell Sim Racing being allowed to exist it becomes desirable and accessible to people like us who maybe won't upgrade their iPhone or their iPad or their laptop and they might actually instead put some money into their sim racing rig and I highly recommend you will not spend if you have 400 quid burning a hole in your pocket you probably won't be more satisfied with many other products. This thing is really as good as it looks. As you might expect, I have a link to Russell Sim Racing's Facebook page in the description below. They are working on a website at the moment, so uh, they don't have a catalog or online shop right now. It's still a relatively small operation at the moment. You can see that there is a divide on the uh, steering wheel itself. It's made up of multiple 3D printed blocks. Uh, that is because he simply does not have a printer large enough to print the whole thing in one piece. Uh, if and when he does, he probably will. I could go on and on about this thing because it, I really, I'm really impressed by it. I'm, I'm far more impressed than I thought I would be, and I'm not that easily impressed. It's, uh, it's really, really good. I could talk about it all day, but I think I've said what I need to say in the video now. So I really appreciate you guys having a watch of these videos and liking and subscribing and all that kind of stuff. If you have specific products, especially from small sim racing related companies that you want to have reviewed, I'll get in touch with those companies, come up with a deal with them, whether I buy the product or they send it out to me and I send it back or even get to keep it or even better, get to give it away on the channel. We'll see how it goes. But if you have suggestions, give a shout or if you own one of those companies, give a shout because 
this is what you can expect as far as the quality of video and review goes. So thank you very much for watching everybody and I will chat to you later.